Hi, uh, my name's Mike Ford, and I'm with Coast Commercial Credit. I'm the managing director. Um, been financing car washes for about 30 years, and um, I'm here today to talk to you about uh, financing for existing car wash operators. I think the first thing that we need to talk about is what's going on in the world today. Um, we have the coronavirus, and it's, it's affecting people, it's affecting car washes. Um, the government has put into place uh, a disaster relief program. Uh, the disaster relief program is up to $2 million, so you can get a disaster relief loan uh, at, for $2 million, up to $2 million, at an interest rate of 3.75% for a 30-year 30, for, for 30 term, and payments can be deferred up to 12 months. Um, I think it's critical right now to understand that, you know, it's a short-time aberration that we're, what we're going to see here in the economy. And so getting help from the SBA through this disaster relief program uh, can be very helpful. Uh, the uh, contact number for the SBA uh, Assistance Center is 1-800-659-2955. Or you can go to sba.gov. That's sba.gov. Okay. Uh, there are there are some programs available uh, through the SBA that will help you with your payments. One of those is uh, the deferral payment program. Uh, in under the SBA 7A, you can defer payments up to six months, from three to six months, depends on which type of SBA 7A loan you have. Also, under the SBA 504 loan program you can defer up to six months. So there's some, there's some relief available through the government that is available. Um, other programs that, that will be available for you are, are fee waivers. They're talking about fee waivers. Uh, they're also talking about um, re reduce, reduction of um, deferral of payments and uh, increased terms. Um, so let's talk on that same, on that same Note, let's talk about things that you can do today to plan, not only for the short term, but for the long term. Um, one of the things that you can do is, is look at refinancing. Right now, with uh, this, the current environment, interest rates have dropped dramatically. Um, interest rates are down to as low as, uh, on an SBA 504 loan, as low as 2.88%. Now that's historic lows. So the refinance programs that we're going to talk about are the both SBA and conventional. We're going to talk a little bit about acquisition and remodel financing, and we're also going to talk about equipment financing. Um, let's talk about refinancing and acquisition options. Okay, um, the first the first program that I like to talk about is uh, the SBA 504 loan program. That's a loan up to 25 years. So you can refinance your existing, if you have a conventional loan, uh, you can either use an SBA 504 or an SBA 7A loan to refinance, okay? And, and the SBA 504 loan is actually two loans. It's a split loan. There's a conventional loan and there's an SBA second. Now the current rate on that SBA uh, 504 loan is 2.88%, and that's fixed for 25 years. Um, the rate on the conventional portion of that loan, the SBA portion of an SBA 504 loan is about 40%. There's also a conventional portion, which is 60% approximately. And that rate is around 5% today. So what you're lo looking at is a blended rate of approximately 4%. Um, so in comparison to, say, 6.5% uh, uh, rate loan that you may have for 15 years, there's going to be significant savings, and I'll go over that in a little while. Um, other loan programs that are available for refinance or acquisition, uh, the SBA 7A loan, uh, which is a 25-year term. Rates are running right now between 5 and 6%, uh, which is significantly lower than what they have been before in the past. Prime, they're, they're generally based on prime rate. And the SBA 7A loan um, uh, prime rate has dropped down to three and a quarter percent, so it's a uh, spread over prime. Um, and then there's th then there's conventional lending. Now, what's the difference between conventional lending and SBA lending? Well, in an SBA loan, there's a government guarantee. A conventional loan has no government guarantee. It's backed by the assets that are, are being financed. So, typically, in a conventional loan, 
you're going to have a lower loan to value. Loan to value, um, typically in a, in a conventional loan, range between 50 and 70 percent. Uh, currently, we're offering uh, 65 percent conventional refis up to 25 years term. So uh, people that have SBA loans cannot get another SBA loan to refinance that existing loan. You'll have to go to go to a conventional loan. Conventional loans um, are typically 20 to 25 years. The lower loan to value um, allows you to, um, to for, the, for the financial institution to feel secure in the, in the transaction. Typically, uh, the rates right now have dropped down to between four and a half and five and a half percent for a conventional refi. So if you've been in, in your uh, car wash for, say, three, four years, we know that the values have went up dramatically. And say you had a, had a 504 loan and you put 20 percent down. Well, you might be in a position to be able to get into a conventional refinance. Um, so I, I've got some, ex uh, some examples of what, how it's going to impact your cash flow. If you had a $3 million loan and it was amortized over, say, 15 years, which is typical for a conventional loan, uh, many, many conventional loans are either 10 or 15 year amortization. Some go out to 25. Right now, as I said, we're offering a 25 year term or uh, loan. And, and if your rate, if you had a $3 million loan at 6.5%, amortized over uh, 15 years, you, you would have a payment roughly of about $28,000. Now, uh, if you compare that to, say, refinancing that same note with a conventional loan at 5% amortized over 25 years, your payment drops down to $17,000 and change. So that increases your cash flow by almost $8,600 per month or over $100,000 a year. I think that's fairly significant. And right now, now this, this, is, this is a plan not only for the short term, but it's also a plan for the long term. You can increase your cash flow using a conventional, using an SBA 504, or using an SBA 7A. If you refinance with an SBA 504 loan, your payment would drop from $26,000 down to, say, $10,300 a month. So that's, that's a savings of about $123,000 a year in cash flow. Very significant impact on your business. Um, the SBA 7A loan, uh, if it was priced at prime plus two, would be five and a quarter percent. Amortized over 25 years, that would be a payment of approximately 18000 or a savings of a little bit over $8,000 a month. And so that can impact your cash flow by about $98,000 a year. That's fairly significant in, in looking at not only the short term, but the long term, as I mentioned. If you choose to refinance, either with a conventional loan, SBA 504, SBA 7A loan, uh, those can impact your, your business dramatically. Um, also, with these same, these same loans are available for, uh, for, for existing uh, car washes that may be looking at acquiring sites or remodeling. So uh, feel free to contact Coast Commercial Credit if you have any questions regarding refinancing. Um, Let's talk about equipment financing. One of the things that um, is that that may be needed for an existing business would be some new equipment, whether it's to replace ex uh, employees or to create efficiencies. Um, we offer an application-only program up to four hundred thousand dollars. That's an easy qualification program. All you need is a, a completed credit application, some bank statements, and the equipment quote. So. Um, those are available for terms up to five to, from five to seven years. Um, also, there, through the SBA, there's a 10-year loan program. Um, it, the 10-year loan program gives you longer amortization, which means lower payments. Also, um, it, has, it has a very good interest rate. Right now, the rates on, on the, um, the SBA program, as I said, are typically between five and six percent. Um, these programs, the 10-year program, is great for low-volume sites or, or large, larger dollar transactions. Um, for example, if you were to, um, if you were to get uh, an equipment lease or equipment loan, uh, it's a standard equipment finance agreement, for five years, the payment would be approximately $2,000 to $2,100. Um, going 10 years, the payment can drop as low as $1,000 a month. Um, that means 
that you can reduce your cash flow or increase your cash flow, reduce your payments by between nine, $900 to $1,000 per month. Fairly significant. And if you look at that, now that's on $100,000. But if you were remodeling your site and say doing a complete remodel and you're spending a million, that's $9,000 to $10,000 per month, and that's really significant. So the 10-year program is, is very attractive. The five-year program is, five-year five to five- to seven-year program is very attractive from the standpoint of ease of entry. So for those of you that are looking to replace a small piece of equipment, you may want to look at the, look at the application program. It, typically, it's up to $400,000 uh, for the application-only program. If you have any questions regarding financing, whether, whether it's through, through the SBA, through the relief programs, or um, refinancing, acquisition financing, um, we're here, Coast Commercial Credit's here and available to help you. Um, feel free to call us at 1-800-400-0365, um, or you can contact me at mikef at coastcc.com. Thank you very much, and happy washing. Welcome back to Virtual Car Wash Expo, sponsored by Sunny's. I'm Bob Fox. I'm joined by Mike Ford right now. Obviously, you you folks just watched Mike's presentation. Mike, a lot's changing minute by minute. Can you give us an update on what's going on right now with the SBA and uh, with the loans and the penalties and things being waived, et cetera? Absolutely. Um, yeah, there's <laughs> it's it's moving really fast right now. Um, there's a lot going on. I think the probably the very first thing that we should talk about is for those people that have SBA loans. Uh, in my presentation earlier, we had a three to six month deferral. Okay, actually, the SBA has come out with a six month paid payment program. Okay, so what that means is how that differs, I guess, is that um, now people with existing SBA loans are now going to have their payments deferred, or not deferred, but paid by the federal government for six months. So that's automatically gonna happen for both SBA 7A and 504 loans. Now the 504 loan wow. is, is, yeah, it's, it's something else. The 504 loan is um, a, a loan that's actually split into two. It has a conventional portion and an SBA portion. The portion that's being waived or actually paid by the federal government is the SBA portion. That portion represents about 40% of the total payment. So it's a very significant change from just getting it deferred. So basically before what they were doing was deferring it, pushing it back um, and adding it on to the end, end of the loan. Now it's being paid. And here's the wow. real, yeah, yeah, it's, it's something. Here's the, here's the real big news for those people that are getting SBA loans, okay? They said, on March, from March 27th through September 27th, anybody that is getting an SBA 7A or 504 loan that closes in that time frame will get the six month deferral. So if you can imagine the opportunity here for people that may, uh, for example, wanna get a, a 10 year equipment loan to rehab their site, they get six months of paid payments. So that's really huge because, you know, Business is obviously slow right now. And, um, you know, if they take advantage of it and close quickly, they can get six months of free payments paid by the federal government. Um, so that's probably the biggest, the, the first big, big thing that's happened. A lot of other things are happening too. deferral payment deferrals are happening with uh, if you have conventional loans or equipment leases. So for those people that are in an equipment lease or equipment finance agreement and they're saying, you know, how am I going to make my payment? I strongly suggest you call your, your lender because everybody's being really reasonable about deferring payments. Typically, we're seeing um, car wash owners getting uh, payments deferred three months, no issues, no problems. It's ne there's no negative impact on, on your credit. Everybody realizes what the, you know, the current situation. So um, for those of you that are, that are looking, and, and, and that's also with conventional loans. So those of you that are in um, conventional loans want to put off um, put off uh, payments for a little bit of, to get a, get some breathing room. That's an option. Call your lender. Um, also, um, with, as, as far as as far as the I talked a lot about refinance. Um, refinance right now for an SBA loan really doesn't make a lot of sense since they're going to give you six months of free payments. 
but it doesn't mean that you can't start lining that up right now because interest rates are crazy. They're really low. Um, right now, uh, conventional loans are, are generally based on, on treasury swap rates. So there's a, it's, it's like LIBOR or prime rate, but treasury swap rates are, are how they fix loans. Um, right now, uh, the five-year swap rate's at a half percent. What that means is that, um, just to give you a comparison, uh, in May of last year, it was two and a half percent. So there's been a 2% drop in interest rates. Now that's not your final rate. There's always a markup above swaps. So if you're doing a conventional loan, you, you're probably somewhere in the neighborhood of the high fours to the low fives, which is very attractive because you know people people that just did it May of last year are probably going to be two percent higher. Um, okay, so other things that, that that are going on, and probably the hottest topic right now is the um, payroll, the CARES Payroll Protection Program. Okay, and that's what uh, is, has been in the news. On Friday, it was supposed to open up, and the program only opened up with uh, people started taking applications. A few financial institutions started taking applications. Um, the biggest one was Bank of America, but they said, hold on, we're only going to do our current loan customers. Since then, they've loosened up a little bit, and I believe that they're doing their existing checking account customers, also business checking account customers. Um, most of the financial institutions, though, are still not in the program. Um, and this is sort of scary because over almost 10% of the money as of this morning had already been um, had already been uh, approved. So there was like a $340 million um, amount that was that, that's available. And there's already been over 30, 30 million of it has already gone. So a very small percentage of banks and financial institutions have been have been doing the loan. Uh, the, and the payroll protection pro program. Let me tell you a little bit about that. I guess I should I should go into that a little bit. It's it's a, it's the the loan that they've been talking about that helps you with payroll. Um, so it gives you two and a half months of your your monthly payroll. So if your monthly payroll is let's just say ten thousand dollars a month, then you're going to get a twenty five thousand dollar loan. And the best part about the loan is that it's forgivable. So you may not have to pay it back. But the, the, the critical thing that everybody needs to understand is that 75% of the money that you do receive through that payroll protection program has to go towards payroll. The whole purpose of the payroll protection program is to put people to work, okay? And so if you, don't, if you, if you only spend 60% of it, you'll end up having to repay that loan. But here's, here's the good news about that. The loans only at one percent, one percent for two years. So you have a six. It comes with a six-month deferral. So you have a six-month deferral, and then if seventy-five percent of the money goes goes towards payroll, retaining employees and paying payroll costs, then that loan will be forgiven. The, the if if you do not do that, then you'll have a repayment period of of, of two years at one percent. So. Um, I think those are the two big things. Also, in, in that payroll protection program, um, there is uh, no no personal guarantees and no collateral. Okay, so getting back, yeah, it's crazy. Um, get, getting back to why why bankers are hesitant to enter into this this marketplace. Okay, is it's it's a um, it's a situation where there's some unclear language in the bill or the information that's been provided by the SBA. So financial institutions are concerned. They're concerned about writing a 1% loan with no personal guarantee and no collateral. And then the SBA, it's 100% guaranteed by the SBA. And so if they don't collect the right items, the SBA not, may not purchase that back. So that's why a lot of financial institutions are not doing it right now as we speak, even though the marketplace is open. So if there's anybody out there that's been excluded from getting the payroll protection plan, or their, their bank has said, hey, we're, we're holding off on it, please um, send me an email and I will send you the link to, their, to a couple of different lenders that are actually doing it live right now um, so, that you can, so that you can get in line. The money's going quick, it's gonna be gone. And I, I would say if 10% was already gone with only part of the lenders on Friday, by the middle of the week, the money could be gone. So you need to move really fast. What's your email address again, Mike? 
it's Mike F at coastcc.com. Mike just could, got about 400 emails. <laughs> <laughs> How could the money go that quickly? You said there's 340 million only for this? Bill, billion. Oh, billion. billion. Yeah, but and ten percent's already gone, and and none of the, basically none of the big financial players are involved yet. Right. Well, I think Wells Fargo jumped in today, but Wells said that they're going to limit the amount that they because of this the the concern about the the language. Um, from what I understand, they said that they were going to limit the amount that they're going to lend. Um, and like and like I said, there's a lot of small um, uh, financial institutions that are just not doing it. Uh, one other thing that's very important, there's there's a lot of people out there, car wash distributors, car wash owners that do not have payroll. This is a payroll program. And you say, well, wait a minute, I don't, I, they're going to require documentation as to how much payroll you had. You're going to have to provide documentation from payroll from last year. If you just started at the beginning of this year, then you can provide it for this year. So they're looking for the 940, the 941, the 944. Those are all forms that, that are sure. that, that, that document um, payroll. What? Um, but sole proprietors and single owner LLCs, they may not pay themselves a salary as such. Well, what you'd have to do then is provide um, documentation of your, your income. So for example, if you had a net income uh, for a sole proprietor of, um, $100,000 a year, then they would divide that by 12, multiply it times two and a half, and that's your payroll. So that's how they're going to calculate that. So don't hesitate to apply, you know, because there's a lot of, lot of, you know, mom and pops out there, a lot of people, a lot of distributors, a lot of people out there doing, doing good work that deserve to get this money. Don't hesitate to apply because it's going to go fast. There you go. Early bird gets to warm, especially when it comes to free money. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Joining us on the panel here, I'm our CEO, Paul Fazio, president of our equipment division, Anthony Anileto, and Katie Pierce, our vice president of sales and marketing. Mike, uh, we got a couple of questions pouring in. I knew this would probably be one of the more uh, hotly contested segments of the, the day. <clears throat> Hi, Mike. Nice to put a face to your name. As you know, I'm working with you and Todd with all that is happening. I'm in fear of not getting the funding SBA slash conventional for my car wash. Is that a realistic possibility or am I just in panic mode? This is from Andy at Easy Express. <laughs> All right, Andy. No, uh, I think you're going to be in, in, in fine hands. Uh, you know, we've been uh, working very hard. This is going to be a temporary aberration in the marketplace. Yes, there, there is going to be a little bit of a slowdown because this process is going to, is going to take up virtually all lenders. Um, ability to, to write loans for a very short period of time. Like I said, it's going to go away. Uh, this, these funds are going to be, they're going to go through these funds by this week. So it's not going to be a big delay, um, but there's, there is going to be a, a little bit of a ripple effect because of course, applications and loans that are going in um, are, are going to be behind, you know, they're, they're going to start stacking up. So if you're looking to apply, start now, get ready and, um, and, be proactive because it's going to take a little bit longer, but it's still going to happen. And you'll still get that six months of free payments. Well, when you financed your first wash, what were you paying? Oh, it was uh, right about 22% back in the 80s. 22% might have financed mine in 1989. I was about 15 and happy to get it. Now, <laughs> just, now it seems like they're just giving money away, doesn't it? Absolutely. All right. Our next question is I own, I currently own a full service and thinking on upgrading the equipment. Is a lease property, or I'm sorry, what type of loan do you recommend? I'm sorry. He's going to upgrade the equipment and his full serve. What type of loan do you recommend? It, de it depends on time and business. It um, if, if it's going to be a lot of money, you may want to consider doing a 10-year loan, a 10-year SBA. One, because of those free payments, but secondly, because the rate is low and it's spread out over a long period of time. The equipment's going to last 10 years. I hope, right? And, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. If yeah, you take the, care of it. That's right. And, and, and so if you spread it out over, over 10 years, there's no prepayment penalty with the program. So that's a good option. Of course, if you're looking, if you're looking at uh, a relatively small amount of money, um, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars, um, you, know, you may, may decide, well, I'm, I want to do an app only program. So there's five and seven year app only programs where you basically just provide um, 
your, your name, your address, your telephone, and some bank information and equipment quote, and you can get approved. All right, Mike, is the SBA going to pay six months of full mortgage payments, including principal and interest? When will that start? It's, it's, um, it's supposed to start automatically, and it should start uh, this coming month. I've already received notification on SBA 504 loans, but like I said, those are split loans, a little bit different. They're handled, uh, handled differently, but uh, the 504s are already deferring this month. I believe the 7A should start deferring next month. Are not deferring, I'm sorry, paid payments. Wow. Yeah. So, okay, another question from Tara. If I pay somebody two thirds of their pay for 10 weeks on the FMLA, does that amount count towards the 75% on PPP? It should, yes. The, the, um, they're taking into consideration um, items related to uh, payroll is not just simply payroll. They're taking into consideration items like healthcare benefits and leave and other things like that. Okay. Got one from David. Are you eligible for both the payroll protection program and the SBA six month deferral program? Oh uh, yeah, actually you're, you're that, that's, both of those are going to, um, going to happen. But here's, here's a better question. Are you eligible for the EIDL loan or the disaster loan and the PPP loan or the pay, pay, payroll protection pro, program loan? And the answer is yes, you are. Um, you just have to use them for separate, separate purposes. So for example, use the payroll protection program loan for your payroll, okay? And then you use the economic disaster loan for other things like your mortgage interest, other things like uh, utilities and such. So you need to keep it separate. And again, on the PPP loan, you have to use 75% for payroll. Um, also, one other thing, there is a, with, with the EIDL loan, the disaster loan, there's a $10,000 grant or advance, they call it, but it's not repayable. Okay, so basically that's $10,000 of, of free money and that's through sba.gov. Now, will that, how does that affect your PPP loan? Well, they're gonna, they, they've said that if you get the $10,000, they're going to reduce the amount of money that they're going to give you for free on the PPP because you're getting 10,000 over on one side. So they don't want you to, they're limiting it a little bit, but still a good loan. My goodness, this, this stuff just sounds too good to be true to me. <laughs> all right, are all lenders using the same formula and requirements to qualify for the PPP loans? No, uh, well, they should be, but the, right now, that's that's the question that's out there, is that um, the lenders are not 100% clear on what is going to be required. Um, the SBA has yet to come out with the, the a clear list of items that should be um that are required by the lenders. So a lot of them are guessing. And from what I heard from that community bankers uh, webinar that I just, just had, um, some of the loans that were made on Friday, they're gonna have to go back and collect some additional information because they weren't collecting enough. Mm, interesting. Yeah. All right, let's see. What are your thoughts on filing taxes now to help speed up the SBA approval process? I read somewhere that it might help. Yeah, well, it's it's, it's easier to to take your your taxes from last year because your taxes are certified a certified document and use those especially for for sole uh, sole proprietors and uh, single pay companies where they don't have a payroll as such those people really should file their taxes that way they it's easily to to identify exactly what one twelfth of their net income is. All right. Bradley from New Orleans is asking, my wash doesn't have much of a payroll, so it seems that this won't benefit me much. Am I understanding this right? And if that's the case, what would you suggest I do? Good. Good question. Well, then I would probably do the, the EIDL, the, the disaster loan, because that comes with a $10,000 um, grant. And they also, right now, they changed that program also, because it was, it came out a couple of weeks ago where they were they started, they started processing the loan and they were requiring full financials. Now, if you go to the website, the, the sba.gov, if you go to that website, it's real simple. It literally will take you five minutes to fill out the information. All you need to know is your, um, your, your total sales, 
your cost of goods sold and um, other expenditures and your name, social security number, tax ID. You can go through it in about five minutes. It is taking longer than, they, than they've said to process it, but you can get in line for that and you should be able to get the $10,000 uh, grant minimally. All right, Mike, we got about 45 seconds left in this segment. What do you say to everybody? Go ahead, Anthony. I, I got one quick one. There's also the three month deferment on your on your loan, as well as a six month free. Do right. you apply for one after the other, or does one go after one expires? Well, that's yeah, that's that's another good question. The um, and it's it's still up in the air a little bit. The 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 wording in the bill says that the the six the, the if you're currently on deferral, the six month free payments will start after the three month deferral. All right, Mike, we appreciate you being here. For you folks whose questions we didn't get Mike to answer live, we will forward those questions to Mike and have him answer you directly. Uh, we appreciate you guys being here. Mike, thanks for joining us. As always, it was good to see you. Uh, you're on Virtual Car Wash Expo. We'll be right back after this next session.